Hello and welcome to the third video in this series, building an app using Vue.js. So just leaving off from the last video, typing hello in here, I get to true down here, uh, where we just looked at computer properties going back into the code. I'm going to make a couple of changes now to the HTML. I'm going to uh, remove this V show here from the put hello, because I don't want that now. I'm going to remove this, but I'm going to leave the div. There. I'll leave the div there. I'm going to leave the some text there as well. Uh, and going back into scripts.js, I'll leave the computer properties just for memory's sake now like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new property to data. So I'm going to add a, a comma and then I'm going to call this counter. And I'm actually copying here an example I think that comes with uh, Vue.js, but it's very instructive and nice. So set counter to zero inside my data object. And one thing I do want to do is below this div here in just the space here, but inside the div that is the um, element of which we've attached our view app. So inside this simple app div here, I'm going to add um, just a pre tag. And inside there, I'm just going to add dollar data. And that should, uh, all things being well, allow us to view our data object that's uh, contained in our view app. Here we can see we've got counter value zero and some text I need to be here. So we can keep track of the state of our object. That's always handy to do using the pre tags and the dollar data like so. So what we're going to look at in this video then is actually no longer computer, but we're going to look at methods. And I'm going to put this, just keep things at the top of the screen above the computed here. So I'm just going to say methods. And inside methods, what we had inst have instead of pre-computed properties is that we actually have uh, methods, so functions that may, we might call. Before we go there, though, let's take a little, let's try and make our app a little bit more interactive and actually start showing how we actually um, handle what are called events inside Vue.js. Um, and to do that, we're going to need uh, a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button. I'm going to type button like so. And uh, also close off my button as well. And then I'm just going to say add me, call this with the text add me. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to execute an expression when this button is clicked. And the way I can do this is uh, binding to uh, the click event in view. And again, on the Vue.js uh, site, there's loads and loads of information on all the types of events and how to use them. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I can actually directly have an expression uh, inside these double speech marks here that I want to be executed whenever I click the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to increment counter here every time I click on the button. So counter will now be equal to counter plus one. And then the other thing I want to do below here, and I've prepared uh, already this code so I don't have to spend ages typing it out because this video might get a little bit long, is I've got a paragraph here saying the button above has been clicked uh, counter number of times. So what I'm saying there is to view is when this button is clicked, execute the expression that's inside these double speech marks here, which in this case is incrementing counters. Really nice, really simple, and also really to read and understand even if you've not programmed very much. So if I click on add me, I now get one, two, three, four, and so on. Very, very nice. Now I might like to do something more complicated than just a simple basic expression like this on here. I might actually want to call uh, an actual function and maybe something much more complicated is done inside there uh, or I set off a, a chain of calls to functions or things like this. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the expression here and say no I want to call a method called call on click and to do that uh, make that viable code I need to actually declare this inside my methods section. So here much like computer properties I'm going to say okay I have a function called call on click and now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to log to the console that uh, I actually called call on click. So I'm just going to do this and put some brackets was called like so. So every time we click our button, we should see call on click was called. So if I just go back to my wonderful web application here and refresh and now click add me, you can see that we don't increment uh, the counter because that's no longer being executed but now we've got call on click was called we're actually calling our function here 
Now there's a couple of subtleties with uh, calling methods or functions. We don't, you'll notice we don't have any brackets here and we can actually put some brackets on there and we can then specify uh, some things to be passed to our method as well with those brackets. But we can actually um, leave this empty like this but we are actually sending something to the method. We're actually sending what's called the event. The event was raised when we click the button and this is provided if you don't provide anything else by default um, in view and if actually it actually what I can do if I just put a colon here we can actually just let's have a look at what we have in our event if we go back to our button here I'm just going to add also an ID onto this button so we've got some kind of uh, way of identifying so I'll just call it be it button clicked or something like that is the actual ID of our button and here I've got my event and now if I go back here and just refresh and then give my button a click what you'll see is we've got a mouse event because we use the mouse to click there are you can look in the documentation for view there are key events and all sorts of other things and here we get an absolute enormous amount of information that we can call upon depending on what you might want to do inside your web application so for example we've got the page x y offset y screen x screen y shift key was down yes or no true or false uh, all sorts of things here we've got target which has the id and if i go inside target um, I notice um, that we've got uh, yeah base URL, um, the ID of the element that was actually clicked, the inner HTML and text. You can have a look at these yourself. But lots and lots and lots of information comes with this event, which you can already probably imagine you can use inside your application to make all sorts of other things happen. So we already get by default provided with an event. What's not happening here, Av, is we're not actually doing anything to the value of counter. So let's change, let's actually increment counter as well. And what we can do is just leave this text here for now. So if I go back to my web application and refresh, now you'll see that I'm also incrementing counter. So everything is working as expected. Now what I can do is I can also send something in as an argument into my expression. So an argument being sending in a value. If I use the curly parenthesis here, I can send something in to my expression. So arg text, let's say, and that will be picked up um, inside methods where I actually have to specify this. Now here things get a little bit tricky. The event is no longer available in this way. So I'm just gonna call, um, call this some arg. And now some arg should have the, uh, the value that is set by the argument that I'm sending into my function. And we can still call the event, I'll show you how in a minute once we've done this. But now this has been replaced actually by whatever we've sent into, in this case our text, our function, by us using the curly brackets in this way. So if I just go back to here, refresh, and I'll click add me, you can see that some arg is actually arg text. It received something inside the function but you still might want to get access to uh, your event in this way. So the way you would do this is actually to keep your event argument like so. So you say, I still want my event and I'm gonna call this event in this case. And I'll just copy and paste the text like so and call this event an event. But you have to pass the event in as an actual argument to the function here. And we do this using the uh, magic symbol, the dollar, and then event. And this will tell view, please send as the first argument to call on click the event itself still, and then send a second argument in this way. Uh, event is only sent implicitly if there's n there are no parent parentheses used. Otherwise, you have to explicitly say, I want the event going in as an argument. So if I just refresh the application like this and reload, we now get uh, our arg text coming in with call on click and we still get the access to all the event and all the details that come in there as well. So just to recap what's happening there then, we've said in here, please execute the method call on click please using dollar event send the event that was raised by this click and all the details that come with that and then as the second argument please send the text string arg text when we come into our call on click here we have our event here we have our arg text we print our 
some arg, so our arg text to the screen, and then we also print out to the console our uh, event as well. And then lastly, we continue to increment counter so that we can see the value of counter going up. So hopefully that's clear. That's the most common ways and uses you'll have to a method or methods defined like this inside the application. Uh, and we're ready now the next past the application, uh, the next video, sorry, to start using Beautify and putting some buttons and things proper on the screen to build uh, the app that I showed in the first video. So hopefully that was clear. If it wasn't, then uh, put me a question in the comments. Otherwise, see you in the next video.